I kept applying for jobs. The search was very hard, but it got to the point where I was in my fifth interview for a really big company that I wanted to work in, and I was going to be in their strategy team. And um, that day, I remember I received an, a DM from the Miami Dolphins, and they wanted to work with me. And I was like, what? Like, it, like when? Like, why? How? <laughs> Welcome to Anything and Everything. I'm your host, Angelo Esposito, bringing you compelling chronicles of entrepreneurship, where success means doing anything and everything. Welcome to another episode of the Anything and Everything podcast, where we talk to entrepreneurs and artists about how they're willing to do anything and everything to make their dreams come true. I'm here today with none other than Tatiana from Pesos by Tats. Tatiana, or should I call you Tati or Tat? What's how, how do you like to go by? Well, I go by Tats. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Thank okay. So, thank you for being here. I um, I was super excited to have you because really, you know, I have another podcast called Whisking It All, which is really focused on the restaurant side of things, and it's fun. And we talk to a lot of restaurant operators and tech companies. And then really the idea behind anything and everything was I've met so many people in my life and continue to meet people who are just entrepreneurs, but not in the restaurant space. And so I was like, man, it'd really be cool to tell their story. And so we've gone from, you know, grocery store operators to, you know, we, last episode, we had a guy who's doing eight figures in, uh, in microblading, which I didn't even know what it was until he explained it to me. Um, you know, so really kind of, you know, uh, we had a, we didn't air it yet, but we had a rapper, really cool rapper, um, on the show. So a, a bit of everything. So really maybe we can start off by just telling people what you do. Well, okay. So thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Tatiana and I am a custom shoe artist. I'm local to Miami, but I ship worldwide. Hmm. So basically what I do is custom shoes. Um, I've done a little bit of, of everything besides just shoes, but that's mainly my focus. I'm a big sneakerhead myself, so I love my job. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I know for people who don't know, you know, you were uh, born in Cali, Colombia, which that's where my wife is from. So uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Colombia in general. I, I, I love it. So I'm always extra happy to support Colombian uh, entrepreneurs. But I'd love to hear like your story. You were born there, but then raised in the States. What was that like? Yeah, so I moved to the United States at the age of two. Um, and it's been really nice because I've been able to have best of both worlds. Um, I consider myself 100% Latina, but I love the United States and all the opportunities it has given me. So it's been awesome. <laughs> Amazing. And do you go back often? Do you go back to Colombia once in a while, whether it's the family or just... I know Christmas is a big thing there. Well, I, I've learned this with... With Louisa, the Christmas starts like December 9th and goes on to like January, basically. Yeah, especially in Cali. Um, I can say my parents did a really good job with this. Um, I would go every summer for two years, for two months, sorry. Amazing. So my Spanish is perfect. I have my friends there. Um, this is something that at the beginning I kind of just took for granted. But now that right. I'm older, I'm thankful because... Um, I am 100% bilingual and this Amazing. has definitely helped me um, with my career and with job opportunities as well. And also to just kind of have an open mind, you know, mm. if you only have only lived one thing and have only seen one thing your entire yeah. life, I guess you're... <laughs> yeah, you don't have... You don't have the different perspectives that someone who maybe exactly. travels or lived in different places. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Shout out to Colombia. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I think it's even in my Instagram bio, just Colombia lover. <laughs> um, so just just a big fan of Colombia in general. Um, I actually got to see um, what's the name of the show? Delirio. Delirio uh, in uh, it was a salsa show in Cali, which was really cool. Really, really cool. So if anyone's listening, Delirio in Salsa there was another really cool one. Uh, I'm sure you probably have way better recommendations than me. I've only been a handful of times, but um, I'd love to hear how, you know, from, from what I've seen, it seems like art was really a um, passion for you at such a young age. So I'd love to know, like, do you recall any, like, specific moments or experiences that ignited that passion? 
Yeah, so my mom, she, she's been an artist for most of her, her life. And she, she brought this into my life at a really young age. So I started, well, it was kind of like in my, in my genes, like I just I have always loved drawing and painting. And I've always been really creative. But nice. at the age of five, she enrolled me at an art institute um, in Weston. And I, be I began very young. And probably by like the age of 10, I was already drawing like realistic portraits and stuff like that. Wow. So, um, I've always had that side of me that has always been there. And it's funny because I'm not the type of artist that says like, oh, I, I paint to express myself. Not really. Um, I just love to do it as a hobby. And well, now luckily it's my full time job, That's but awesome. um, it's always something that has been a part of my life. That's awesome. So like from a young age, I didn't know that. So that makes sense. You had it kind of in your blood and then you're just doing it at a young age and really being enrolled, I think at an art institute at the age of five is quite unique. Um, and and how do, how do you think like that early exposure maybe to like the, the formal, if you want to call it that, the more formal art education maybe shaped, you know, your your artistic journey? Oh, no, for sure. Because when I first started, um, I did ceramics and then we started with color pencils. And then as the years went by, I started to explore other different types of materials and working on different types of canvases. So I've been uh, um, exposed to all the different types of ways to actually draw and paint. Um, awesome. Everything from like markers to pens to oil and acrylics. Wow. Um, there's tons of ways to, to do it, different techniques. And I am very thankful that I was enrolled in this art institute because um, then when I was in school, I was always that creative girl that everyone wanted to be in the group project with because <laughs> I just was always super creative. And it was really nice to see because I've, I've always been very dedicated with my um, studies, but mm. I can say I am less of a math and science girl and more of a creative person. So it was nice to see that there was a spot for everyone. Just, I mean, some people were like um, stars in math class. I was a star in art class. That's awesome. So, so yeah, it's nice to expose your kids to different types of activities, art, dancing, because they're going to find their place. That's awesome. And so I'd love to hear, like, you know, for, for our audience that doesn't know, Piece, Pisos by Tats is, is, you know, a really, really fascinating venture. Uh, we can get more into it and, like, you know, people you work with, but tons of success. But I'd love to hear, like, what, first of all, maybe for people who don't know, I know now that I got that kind of man exposure, what Pisos means, but maybe <laughs> tell people what is Pisos by Tats and, like, how you got into that, right? So from that art school and tasting different flavors to then getting into pisos by tats okay this is the the fun part of the interview <laughs> um, i so to get started pisos basically means kicks in spanish um as we had talked about i'm very proud of my hispanic culture and i definitely wanted to incorporate this in the mm. name um kicks by tats would have been very basic so mm. <laughs> i'm glad i stuck to pisos yeah and so what it pisos now is the custom shoe you're wearing. So if you're wearing pisos, you're also called an original. So this is like mm. the language I used for my branding. Um, and how I got into it is is very nice and is is a, a nice story because I I started this as a hobby and I really never thought I was gonna make a living off of art. Um, just like I was raised. Um, by my mom always motivating me to enjoy my passion and everything but I was I was also raised in a society where people would tell me that I was I was gonna like die of hunger like if I'm right. an artist, you know like right, oh, right. yeah enjoy it but also don't forget to find a real job kind exactly, of thing, like, exactly. yeah. that was basically it like like you need a real job when you grow up so I I grew with both things in my mind um I don't think my mom wanted me to be an artist, like famous artist. I mean, she just wanted to pass on her hobby to me and she did. 
And um, while I'm in school and then in college, um, I've always been very disciplined with, and I've always taken every, like, um, co like school very seriously. And my dream had always been to work in a corporate company. Um, I did see myself in a creative side, but not necessarily mm. drawing and painting. There's much more to creativity. Yep. So I went to the University of Florida um, and I studied advertising and business. And I started to find a passion for strategy, the strategy side of advertising. So I've never, I've been creative, but I'm also, I mean, as I mentioned, like creativity is so big. It's not just graphic right. design. I was exposed to graphic design very early in my career and I never liked it. Um, I found myself to be very good at strategy and very creative at it because That's awesome. you, need to, you need to be like on point thinking, especially for like brands. As a creative, my goal was to work in the strategy team. This is what I found a passion in. And, um, and then there goes the question of how Pesos by Tots started. So I was in my last semester of college and as I mentioned, drawing has always been a part of my life. So I've always been the one to like doodle on my, mm. on my books at school and stuff like that. And for some reason, a lot of, a lot of roads led to the same thing, which was painting on shoes. So I started doodling on my shoes. Um, wow. That was one, one, one thing, like I had a pair of shoes that I doodled on, but it was no big deal. And then I had a pair I bought that looked like someone painted on them and I would receive compliments. And it, like there were man, many roads that led to the same thing, which led me to customizing shoes. Wow. Um, and then I graduated during COVID. So I, I was obviously applying to jobs, but it was very difficult. Um, I was able to land a full-time job in an advertising agency here in Miami. Okay. And before even starting, I was laid off. And, oh, wow. And, okay. <laughs> yeah, just because these times were so hard. Yeah, yeah. The economy uh, during COVID was, was taking yeah. a beating. But I was still at home customizing shoes. I opened an Instagram. I really didn't give it much thought. I called it Pisos by Tots. And... Um, and people started ordering. People liked what I was doing. Wow. Um, my Instagram kept growing, and but it was a hobby. Like I never thought I was gonna make money off of That's it. That's awesome. Um, I wasn't really, you know, like it was yeah, just, yeah. just like people were baking and stuff during COVID. I was yeah. Shoes. And then I kept applying for jobs. Um, the search was very hard but it got to the point where I was in my fifth interview for a really big company that I wanted to work in and I was gonna be in their strategy team. And um, that day, I remember I received an, a DM from the Miami Dolphins and they wanted to work with me. And I was like, wow. what? Like, it, like, when, like, why, how? <laughs> yeah, 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 oh my God. And all these thoughts started going through my mind. And then I remember a few minutes before the interview, I'm like, wait, I like, this is a, a cool job opportunity. Like I have something in my hands. Right. So I went into the um, interview and all the star questions, I would always relate them to pieces by Tots. And of course I didn't get the job. <laughs> the interview, interviewer saw me a little too excited about my <laughs> yeah, about your venture yeah um and yeah and after that day that was the last interview i ever gave um wow and it, awesome. it, it was nice because this is this is something that i mean sometimes you start a job because um you start your own business it's something that you planned and it's something that you created a strategy a business plan and it led to something but for me, it was different. It was something that um, I grew a passion into a full-time job. I was yeah. able to incorporate my career in advertising to my business. Um, I'm not, I don't consider myself just an artist. It, there's a lot behind what I do and the way I saw my business and I saw myself as an artist. So there's definitely a, a lot of strategy and advertising yeah. to it. So I was able to tie all my passions to what I do. 
but that's how that's, that's how it started um and i'm really happy today with what i do i do work with a lot of corporate clients and some of them i applied to in college and i didn't get answers just because we were in covid so it's awesome to know that i i work with them today and i work with their marketing team that's amazing <laughs> so life works in mysterious ways but yeah sometimes you just have to that's so cool kind of push through you know <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's a great message it's so cool and i think super rewarding i could see it in like your smile but from being a you know a potential candidate to be an employee to now them being your clients you know it's a really cool and fascinating switch and i think it's a really cool story because to your point a lot of entrepreneurs kind of have an idea or at least the way it worked for me was like you know i kind of saw this problem and it was more like solving a problem more on the technology exactly. side or business side but your journey is super cool because it's kind of like, all right, I got this hobby, but I'm still trying to find a real quote unquote job and seeing that hobby then have demand and interest and like, oh, this is a real thing. So I love to take it back to that moment because I think that was probably a pivotal moment. The You get this idea, you know, so you're starting this thing. It's a hobby. People are ordering, which, by the way, is a very good sign for any business, whether it's artistic or not. Like I always tell people, like the sooner you get your idea or product out there, the better because the best feedback you're going to get is from the real world so the fact that like people were starting to follow you in order like already it's like good sign but i'd love to get to that pivotal point or at least the first pivotal point which is miami dolphins they dm you what do they say what do you say like what are the, what are you know what, what did that dm look like and what's going through your head and what <laughs> happened there i'd love to hear about that project so they reached out and saying that they they liked what i what I was doing, that they wanted to talk to me about a potential job opportunity. And um, I was just like, it, it, it was like, it was perfect because it was the day of my last interview of something that I really wanted back then. So right. it was like that sign, you know, like, yeah, I, I definitely do believe that sometimes we do get signs. Yeah. <laughs> and for too. me, it was that sign. Um, it was very emotional. I mean, as I was someone that was that has been raised in Miami, um, yeah. obviously this is really big for me. Yeah. And we jumped on a call with the team and heard what they wanted to do. And since then, they're one of my clients. I still have a relationship, with, a work relationship with them. And, That's amazing. But yeah, it, it was like that sign because, as you mentioned, I mean, when we're starting as an entrepreneur, like. I learned this a lot in college. If you want to start a business or something, you always have to think about how to solve a problem. But I do believe that there is two ways of starting a business. Sometimes it's right in front of you and you just have mm. to jump on the opportunity. Yeah. And because sometimes you end up forcing it, you know, like yeah. I heard a piece of by Tots. I was going to start a business um, in the skincare industry and I worked on it for a long time with my team and it never and never happened right so there's i mean sometimes the opportunity is right there and you just have to have to take it mm. i it took me a while to understand this because i was very hard on myself um i i, I was like i graduated from well uf right now is like top one university i'm like why am i gonna paint shoes like I don't want to make a living off of art. Like I, I kind of downgraded myself for that. Um, mm. My friends were working in big corporate companies. Like all my friends, like I have friends working for Apple Dior mm. right now. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be painting shoes. Like, no, I wanted to be up there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's not the path that was chosen for me that I was designated to do. And it took me a while to admit it and understand it. And at the That's beginning, awesome. I wasn't too happy doing what I did because I was just working with individual clients, which don't get me wrong, I love doing this. But I, I found like I was missing something. Hmm. And now that I have the opportunity to work with corporate clients, I feel 100% satisfied with what I do because That's I have best of both worlds. Um, I, I'm doing what I love, but I'm also working on that strategy behind um, these businesses because yeah. when we meet, they're like, 
it's not just a shoe. Um, I sell it as a form of advertising and as a way of a marketing activation and as a way to um, engage with your audience and engage mm. with your employees. And like, there's so much to it. So it's fun to meet with these clients and ask them, what is, what are you guys trying to do? Some people yeah. are just, um, trying to create brand exposure. Others have a lot of brand exposure and are just trying to interact with their audience in a unique and memorable way. So it's, it's very fun. And now I can say that I, <laughs> I'm like really happy with what I do. That's amazing. It's so good to hear like people that love what they do. It's, it's, a lot more rare than you think, right? You would assume it. You would assume it happens more often than not, but um, yeah. truth, truthfully, it's quite rare. And I, th I think your story is super interesting because, like you said, you kind of went through the journey of like kind of trusting your gut, but then you know doubting it at times because you know the grass always looks greener. And yeah, I, I totally relate. You know, like well, I think a lot of entrepreneurs to trust your gut. Like yeah, oh my God, so many times at the beginning, especially economically, like. I mean, we're not going to lie, like entrepreneurs, we struggle, we struggle. And at the beginning, yeah. it was really hard. Um, thank God I was like just a grad, like recent grad. So I still had my parents support um, COVID, but I was really hard. Like I was not yeah. earning um, a salary and it was a hard struggle, but I mean, it's worth it. And now it's funny because I. I have like my my reunions with my college friends and most of them working at like these big big companies they're like i want to quit like i want to start doing something <laughs> I love. like i want to start yeah, the tables have turned yeah 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 like all these like like they're trying to pull out their hobbies yeah so, i mean i kind of do I mean, I, I would have loved to have the experience of working at a corporate company, at least for maybe a few years, yeah. but that's not the way it, it rolled out. Yeah. And I know that if I would have maybe started a corporate company, started getting my employee benefits, my um, comfortable. salaries, and yeah. it, it would have been harder to take a step back and say, yeah. like, okay, I'm going to give all this up and I'm going to start painting shoes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a big leap. It's true. And, and in fairness, like a lot of people get, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that love their corporate job and that's cool, but there's a good chunk of people that are kind of in the, in that zone of like, I'm comfortable. I don't love it. I might not hate it, but I'm comfortable, which is a dangerous place to be, you know, to just kind of be comfortable and yours are just flying by, you know? Um, exactly. But, yeah, and it, and I love to hear because it's super interesting. Like you said, you're not just an artist, which there's nothing wrong with just that because the art you're doing is amazing. But you're the strategy and advertising behind it too. And so maybe we can walk through. I think it'd be kind of interesting if you can. I don't know, like if it's this top secret or if you can give me an idea. But like maybe we could go through like what does the process look like, high level? But like you know, I know you've worked with big names like Bacardi, Grey Goose, Miami Dolphins. You could pick any, or if you don't have, if you can't pick a specific, you could talk general. Um, you know, I think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you did stuff with uh, with Red Bull, with F1 as well, I think, right? Formula, um, Formula One, exactly. So super cool. So it doesn't have to be a specific one, but in general, what does the process look like, right? So they reach out to you, you know, they're interested. What what is What happens? What happens next? And then how does it go from, you know, that request to then final product? I'd love to hear the general kind of pro, you know, process that you go through. Yeah, so that's a that's a really good question. Um, sometimes a client comes to me and they already have something in mind, something they want to do. And sometimes they see that I'm working with these other clients and they're like, hey, like we want to do something, but we don't know what we can do. Mm. So, um, so let's take the idea where they really don't know what they want. Sure. Um, we, we have a meeting and I ask, what is your goal? with customizing shoes like what um what are you guys trying to accomplish and yeah. from there I take that and I give them some ideas on if if either we're doing um a giveaway or we're gonna do a live event or we're gonna do um gifts for either influencers or employees so it kind of just depends on how the conversation goes um, and then I ask for their branding, for their branding guidelines and their marketing nice. kit. And based on that, I create a design. And here, some strategy plays in as well because I have to create a design 
based on their needs. Mm. Um, if it's, let's say I've done like shoes for a CEO, obviously I'm going to make them very branded. And, but if I'm doing something for like, um, an influencer, like, yes, we want the company's logo on there, but we don't want it to be like screaming, like advertising. Cause we obviously want them to wear the shoes. So mm. there's a strategy behind each design I do. And then cool. um, I make a proposal will a proposal, sorry, with different prices and designs. And then they working with these companies has is like lots of processes because they have to right. show the team, get approvals. Right. But um, then they meet with their team, show their designs. I normally get feedback and then we go from there. That's super cool. And then just out of curiosity, right, because I could imagine whether it's Miami Dolphins or some of these, you know, bigger corporate clients on the high end, like, is it ever like a big amount of shoes? Like, and you're just like, I'm just thinking like, obviously, you know, doing a pair here, a pair there, or like a CEO, but what happened? Or let me ask you this, maybe taking a step back. What's the like most pairs of shoes you've had to do for a client? <laughs> um, so it, it depends because sometimes they do ask for a big order that has to be done in a timely manner. But then sometimes I just like, let's say Bacardi, I've been working with them for like the past two years and it's like here and I hear in their shoes, like throughout the month, half of my orders are from Bacardi, but it's not like 50 of the same shoes that we need to ship out. Got it. One of my most recent orders that was pretty big was for Formula One. We did custom shoes for all their partners. So this was a really unique way to thank their partners so let's say they give they gave shoes to chase jp morgan um henneken red bull you know, tons that's of pretty cool that they have. and it's a it's a really nice way of thinking them because i mean super i unique. always try to think yeah. of like like people they give like chocolates or like <laughs> um custom hat or like they create like a box with like unique yeah. like cool gifts and stuff but like imagine receiving a pair of shoes that was painted for you. Yes. I make all part of my my branding is that storytelling of hey, this shoe was handmade for you. That's so awesome. when you receive the the shoe, um, the box tells its story of hey, Angelo, these shoes were made just for you. That's um, awesome. So I feel like there's no other gift that is as unique as this, and and you can really, I mean. If I were the partner, I'd be like, wow, like I, like they value my partnership, you know, like they took time time. to do this. Um, And then I guess some partners are going to wear them. Some are just going to display them in their office. But yeah, I feel like they're so nice. I'd have to like display it. Like I got to get a pair. Like I'm going to add it. We'll talk, but I'm going to definitely support you. I love maybe get something for whisk, but uh, yeah, I'm going to, they just look too nice. And I, and I noticed, you know, obviously being having you know my love for Colombia, I noticed that you did something super cool for Sebastian Yatra. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Yes. You know, I love I love his song there. Uh, what is it? Taco, Tacones Rojas, Rojas, Rojas. Tacones Rojos. <laughs> Rojos, Rojos. Yeah, my Spanish is not too good, but um, I know the lyrics. Hay un rayo de sol. That's all I know. But <laughs> yeah. that that, <laughs> that was a super cool. Uh, super cool artist like for those who don't know like it's massive artist i think he has like 20 million followers on instagram uh you know top charts so like that's pretty cool apart from these brands you got this massive artist so i had to just touch on it because number one that's huge and number two my love for colombia i had to ask you how did that happen and i'd love to just hear if you don't mind sharing like what the inspiration was when you did his shoes or, or you know created his his design yeah so um I really wanted to give him these shoes part like big part because he's Colombian. He grew up in the city where I grew up and I he's always been someone that I really admire because um, I, I'm really more than being like a fan of him. I'm just like someone that I'm like, wow, like you came from the like you you were a normal civilian at school like I was, you know, and like that's so amazing. Um, that he he is Sebastian Jatra right now, yeah. And he he's also someone that really supports artists. I I'm really not someone to be like gifting away shoes. He's the first artist that I decide to gift a shoe to him. Oh wow! Okay. But um, it 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 was something that I really wanted to do, 
and I know he also really supports art so I wanted to give him something that he was gonna I mean it takes a lot of time you know there's a lot of thinking behind the design so right. I, I wanted to give it to someone that was gonna value it yeah. and appreciate it exactly yeah. that um, makes sense and the the design was I wanted to I wanted to be something that he could wear um, so I did a big study on his outfits and how he dresses and oh, wow. he would probably like um, but then I also wanted to be something meaningful but not like too cheesy you know right. like I wouldn't want to wear like a shoe that says like my name all over the place right right right, right. yeah a little <laughs> egotistical just like I'm not my own fan <laughs> yeah so um I decided to do something based on the covers to some of his songs and some of to his albums and I also added some of his um he, like his grammys that he won with oh, the names wow. of black and gold so something that was significant to him super so cool. i wanted to highlight his um his accomplishments and and yeah have it i mean hopefully he wears them or again he just keeps them in Displays the same them, yeah as that's well. awesome and it's, it's so cool to hear and the reason i asked that is because yeah i know sometimes things that seem simple even just in general business things that seem simple usually are super complex behind the scenes and this is a perfect example it's like oh cool you did a shoot for this cool artist or famous artist but it's like behind the scenes you're looking at his outfits you're researching you're and it's like people don't realize like there's a lot of work that um go into this right which is which is yeah. awesome um it's a lot of a lot of time and um again choosing the artist like living in miami i have a lot of connections to people that tell me like oh i can help you get this person a shoe this right. person but i i really never i mean some people can say that i'm kind of dumb because i don't take the <laughs> opportunities but, um it's a lot of time and yeah, you're selective I, which is i, I want to do it more strategically you know like it has to be someone that i i truly admire and someone that i want to be wearing my shoes not just like i'm not going to give something to you just because you're famous yeah yeah which which is great i respect that and i think that's proof of your artistic and strategic sides kind of coming together you know um i gotta ask you is there anyone else i'm sure there is but just off the top of your head anyone else that that may be on that list um well that you're uh, thinking of? A client of mine, he's a Coleman soccer player, which is oh, cool. Rafael Santos Borre. Um, he, he's a, well, he's like, if you're, if you're into Colombia, you probably know some soccer. He's um, a soccer player for the Colombian team. And I've done a lot of pairs for him, his wife, That's his awesome. baby. And yeah, it's nice to, to be supported by, by these celebrities as well you know like for yeah. him, i didn't gift it to him he he purchased it for me which was like a huge pat on the back because yeah. <laughs> i mean again like i always say that i mean i'm doing good and stuff but then again to the scope of these professional soccer players to find me on instagram like I yeah <laughs> that's huge yeah, yeah amazing that's so cool and, and i and where do you see let's say you know world of art is evolving you're probably evolving as a person right you're always growing strategically artistically where do you see pisos by tats kind of going in the next few years um i do see myself with a bigger team right now um we're a team of two artists and okay. i definitely want to keep that growing because as you as you asked previously the like what is the amount of orders that you received um like the biggest amount I've been asked to do like thousands of pairs oh, and shit, okay. <laughs> it's not like a common request but I have been asked and it's obviously something that right now is kind of hard for me um right. when I get requests this big I do find a team of people if there's an artist out there that wants to work with pieces by Tots. <laughs> okay yeah that's a good shout out you can yeah. reach out because when we have projects projects like this I do um, build a team okay but I do see myself having a bigger team and working with these corporate clients like it's what I'm passionate about and um, I will never put aside my individual orders I love 
um, that people are able to express express themselves through my arts because that's what they do. But yeah. um, I wanna I wanna continue working with these companies and grow my my client list and be able to see custom shoes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and you know, just to I want to reiterate that shout out because yeah, I, I follow you on Instagram. You have an awesome page. Like your stuff is super fun to follow and see. Right? It's very artistic. It's super cool and. The, the brands you work with so just to give a, a two shout outs i guess one is i want to make it clear so for people listening one for artists that maybe want to you know collaborate especially when you have high demand yes. uh, and two for corporate clients who are maybe like wow this is a really unique and interesting idea how can they reach you can you just do a quick shout out to your website maybe your key social media accounts just so people listening can find you yes that'd be awesome um and i just want to touch up on what you said about corporate clients it doesn't have to be you don't have to be like a huge no like even if you're just like starting off your business and you want to create some brand exposure um do something different i'm here to help and you can reach out That's to awesome. my instagram which is pisos by tots p i s o s by t a t z tots Perfect. with a z at the end Perfect. Or send me an email, which is just hello at pesosbytots.com. Um, and that's another thing. Like, if you go on my Instagram, I have a little highlight that's called brands. And I do tons of shoes for for brands in general. Like, it doesn't just have to be a top corporate company. It can be okay. a restaurant or um, smaller businesses. Like, And, like, tons of people reach out and say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm like an individual client. I want to place my order. Can we add my logo on it? And I do that a lot as well. So that's it doesn't awesome. be like big orders. It can be, I mean, that's so cool for you. Like you want to walk around with anything and everything on your shoe. We can definitely yeah. do that. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Honestly, I'd love to number one support, not that you need my support, but I'd love to support. And, and uh, I think it'd be super cool. I'll get something on the wall, maybe something for whisk and anything and everything. Uh, I I also just have such a deep love for Colombia. Like I'd love to make like I'm thinking about like a Colombia shoe that I want to keep here. Like uh, better than a Cali. I love some of the small towns. El Valle Cocora. El, <laughs> the, no, there's a lot. Uh, sorry, I was gonna say that um, it's like I have shoes myself, and I can tell you that people do look down because people are so used to just like let's say if you're gonna purchase an Air Force, which is the shoe I paint the most. Right. Um, you're used to seeing a white Air Force. So right. if you see like handwriting or something, people always look down and ask me, um, what like what does your shoe say? And I get tons That's of so cool. clients that reach out saying, Hey, I was at the mall and I saw a blonde girl, she's kind of tall. Um <laughs> and I asked her where her shoes were from and she gave me your Instagram. So I there's like so much proof and evidence that people do read what the shoe says. So I That's I'm awesome. Like, so confident that this is a great form of advertising and I consider yeah. it a billboard for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's really cool. Really cool. So now people know where to find you, both on Instagram, on your website. Um, you know, I'd love to, to to see you achieve your goals in the next few years like you want to achieve. And then maybe just to end off, I always like to kind of end off the anything and everything with some kind of, you know tips or guidance and, and we've had people from you know whether it's tech entrepreneurs rappers grocery store owners so it's kind of it could be random fields and now we're talking to a, an awesome you know uh advertiser and artist um so just from your point of view like to to, to the entrepreneurs whether they're actual entrepreneurs today or maybe even aspiring entrepreneurs listening what advice would you maybe want to share with them yes i have a few different tips um sure. so my first tip is to start, literally just start, because um, sometimes we are very scared and we it's hard to take that step, but you just have to take that leap of faith, take that step, and um, it's everything is just going to piece together, all the questions, all the answers are going to mm. come together, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Like, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. Mm. Um and then something else that I've learned along the way and connections and literally just being nice to people. Like, you don't know how far that has taken me. Like, some mm. of the corporate clients that I work with today are people that 
I said hi to in high school. Just like, hi, you know, like, mm. because you, I mean, life works in mysterious ways. Like, yep. right, I, you can be the president of the United States tomorrow. Like, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to be nice to people, support them. I mean, not nice in a convenience way. Like, yeah, you don't just be a good about, person. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to be a good person because yeah. there's no one's going to want to buy your product if you are not a good person. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to want to support you. Um, yeah. And yeah, that that's something that has helped me a lot, like, and has gotten me really far because people, people want to help me. People want to support me. And it surprised me, like people that I haven't talked to in years, they're, they're just like, hey, I want to support that's awesome um and something else is like a tip in general support yeah. entrepreneurs you know like um buy i mean it, it's funny to say it but like it's nice when you buy local when you support yeah. from local artists from local companies um this yeah. stuff does help and 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 support your friends and family like don't yeah. ask them for free stuff <laughs> it's it's funny i was gonna actually just say that it, it's it, it, I don't know why, but the way life works, it's it's odd. And once you're like are an entrepreneur, it, it's like so obvious. But for people who are not, maybe it's not obvious. But it, it's like you know, if tomorrow I open a restaurant, it's like my family and friends would expect like free or half off. When in reality, it's like those are the people that I need to pay double because they're supporting me, you know. And it's it's this ironic thing where it's like, yeah, really, like a good friend should want to support. I'm not saying they got to pay double, but like a good friend should want to support and. I remember when my friend opened his restaurant, I, I was like, no, I don't want any discounts. He's like, let me give you a, 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 something on the house, a coffee. I was like, no, I don't want discounts. Like, I'm going to, I want to over tip you. You just open this. It's going to be hard. Let me help kind of thing. And no, I think there's, true. yeah, there should be more of that to your point is more of like, how can I help? And in fairness for people where maybe money is not the thing and that's fine. You can, and you'll probably relate to this. You can support by liking their posts, by following them on Instagram, by giving them a that's review, true. like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or word of mouth. Um, but no, it, it, it's funny because I've encountered both situations where some friends like tip me and they're like, I mean, they want to support me. And but then I like there's some friends that I mean, it to be honest, I love my friends and they're going to laugh when they hear this. But like out of 10 friends, like two have ordered shoes for me. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, that's not where my business is at, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly, exactly. But yeah, you should never ask a friend or a family member that's just starting their business or yeah. is already very high up there for a free something because, I mean, this is how we pay rent and how we make a living, so yeah. <laughs> it's no, not I really... Love it. I love it. Those are, those are great tips, great tips and like... For people listening, it's easy to support your fellow entrepreneurs and it goes a long way. You know, when you're working behind the scenes, someone sees a 10 second video, it could take you an hour to make it, you know? So it's like that like, that share, the the, the like little heart. It doesn't have to always be money, but it, it does go a long way. And so like, you know, that's a message I just want to add on to, uh, to yours just to be like, guys, it's, it doesn't take much, you know, you're scrolling. If you do like it, hit it, you know, like, or if yeah. you enjoy it, share it. Like uh, <laughs> someone asks you about like a cool product that could maybe mention pesos by it's like it's not crazy and, and it goes a long way so uh with that being said you guys can find it uh can find it on pesos by tats with a z.com you can also follow on instagram and it's at pesos p-i-s-o-s by tats again with a z or z for my canadian friends um mm -hmm. on instagram and uh, you can see all of her work and if it makes sense you guys can even order whether it's for your small business your corporate client or even just an individual yeah for yourself or for a gift um, I actually wanted to show you I have a few here oh so, please yeah I love that yeah, I make tons of wedding gifts so we can add some pearls oh that's cool like simple design for a wedding yeah, um, yeah people love ordering them for weddings for the brides right yeah they always and then this is very cool and all like it was all black so there's a a lot of people ask me does it have to be a white shoe no it can also be a black shoe Very um, cool. a shoe whatever you want yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be nike or air force it can be any brand um for some reason this is the one that people like the most probably trending right now <laughs> <laughs> um it can be anything so 
and and again it doesn't necessarily have to be shoes like that's what i i specialize in but i've done tons of other things i've done water bottles um, oh wow okay i don't know that's so tell me more so like obviously yeah. shoes is your bread and butter but so water bottles what what other kind of stuff um i've even done body painting like i did oh, wow. I worked for um bacardi last year at edc orlando and three points here in miami yeah and part of their marketing activation was to have me doing neon body painting so to bring cool. into casa bacardi so i've done body painting i've done um water bottles i've done tote bags cool I've done jewelry boxes um i've done belts so i mean anything i'm like cool the only thing that i'm like waiting to paint is a mural but <laughs> <laughs> i've done i've done anything so i'm, I'm always awesome. open to just talking about it and seeing yeah it. it's it sounds like you've done anything and everything Oh yes, yes. <laughs> um, that's that's also the cool thing about working with Pizos by Tots that um, we can see like we can see how we can work with your budget. So obviously a shoe is expensive itself. So if you know you want to do something custom made, but you do you want to kind of push the the budget a little down, we can do like jewelry boxes or water bottles or right. Something like that. That's super and, cool. Yeah, and then also work with the. The design, like the amount of hours it takes to do a design, is the cost. Right. So if you want to do something, but um, maybe you're more minimal, yeah, we can do something a little more minimal and still right. make it nice and special. That makes sense. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank That's you so much this is this. Me. Yeah, thank you for being on. Like I love what you're doing. Yeah. For me, it's like really just trying to give a platform to fellow entrepreneurs, no matter what they're doing, because I just being in it it's like i know how hard it is and it's like an uphill battle but like obviously there's the highs are highs the lows are lows uh, but being able to support and just share your story which is amazing like hearing your story is really really cool so i'm happy we're gonna get to share this with people and keep it up and expect something we'll definitely do something i think with whisk and maybe with anything and everything like you got my support we'll, we'll, we'll do some shoes and i'll try to get some cool video content um for you as well awesome no I look i look forward to that and and thank you so much for the interview. Amazing. Thank you for being here today, Tatiana. Once again, Pisos by Tats. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.